What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another fraction lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about subtracting mixed numbers with regrouping. So, let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to subtract mixed numbers with regrouping by lining them up vertically. All right, now, I, we have already worked on subtracting mixed numbers without regrouping. So to do the regrouping, we need to review what a big one is. So you see the timer in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to write down as many fractions that are equivalent to one that you can possibly think of. So get your notes out, get a piece of paper up, write down as many fractions that are equivalent to one that you can think of in 10 seconds. Ready, go. All right, if you remember from previous lessons, anytime you have a fraction where the numerator is the same as the denominator, that is equivalent to one whole, okay? And we call that a big one because what we do here at Instructor Beats is whenever we see a fraction like that, we draw a one around it. It's actually supposed to be one, although it looks like a rectangle because we're not that great at um, art yet, but we have a growth mindset. So you could have written two over two, three over three, and again, we just like to put this one around it because we know that really it's one whole, it's just kind of masquerading like it is a fraction. You could have done 100 over 100, but again, anything you did, as long as the numerator and denominator were the same, is going to be a fraction that is equal to one. And we're gonna need to know that today as we regroup. All right, our steps that we learned last lesson when we just learned about uh, subtracting mixed numbers. Step number one, we're gonna line up the whole numbers and fractions and circle the numerators. That doesn't do anything mathematically for us when we circle the numerators, but it just helps us to figure out what digits we are supposed to be subtracting. Step number two, we're gonna subtract the numerators. And as we do that, we're gonna ask ourselves this question. More on the top, then no need to stop. More on the floor, go next door and get one more. Now, typically when we talk about whole numbers, we say get 10 more because we're a base 10 number system but we will show you an example of why we say get one more when you're borrowing from a mixed number. And then uh, number four, subtract the whole numbers, right? Boom, we're done. Let's take a look at a problem we did in our previous video. So right here, okay, I'm subtracting mixed numbers. I know my denominators have to be the same because that's the number one rule of adding or subtracting fractions. So all I need to do right here is line them up vertically, right? And you can see my steps right here. So step number one, I'm going to line them up vertically, making sure my fractions and my whole numbers are lined up, just like I would if I was subtracting whole numbers and I was lining my place values up. Then I need to circle my numerators, and now I just ask myself this question. Seven minus six, more on the top or more on the floor? Well, seven is bigger than six, so more on the top, no need to stop, and seven minus six would be one. My denominator obviously stays the same, and then eight holes minus three holes would be five. So the difference between eight and seven eighths and three and six eighths would be five and one eighth. If you can do that, then you've got this today, right? Let's take a look at an I do problem. So here, if you notice, I'm doing eight and three eighths minus three and six eighths. Both of my denominators are the same. Good, that means I can subtract these. Let me go ahead and line these up vertically and I'm actually gonna do it down here, okay? Minus three and six eighths. Now, when you're subtracting, the bigger number has to go on top, right? That's why eight and three eighths is on top because eight holes is bigger than three holes. I can't just switch these numbers all willy nilly. I've got to think when I subtract, right? My menu end is always the top number because it's gotta be my biggest number as far as we know. So I have eight and three eighths minus three and six eighths. I'm gonna circle my numerators. Now, the difference between last lesson and this lesson is Three minus six, I can't do that, right? If you have $3, I can't steal $6 from you. Not that I would ever try to steal money from you. So more on the floor, go next door and get one more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our whole number and we are going to regroup. I'm not gonna say borrow because we're never gonna give it back, but we're going to regroup and take one away from my whole number and turn it into a fraction. So this is why we had to review our big one. 
All right, so I'm taking one and I'm gonna give it to my fraction. So now I can subtract. So I put my plus sign here because I'm getting one more. Now what fraction, if my denominator is eight, because remember, whenever we add or subtract fractions, the denominators have to be the same. That means my denominator is eight, so my big one would have to be eight over eight. All right, so I'm taking one whole, I'm giving it to the fraction, but it's a big one, right? I'm turning the one into a fraction. So I did eight eighths because my denominator is eight and now I can add these together. So now I'm going to rewrite this. I now have seven holes. Eight plus three would be 11. My denominator stays the same. So I have now turned eight and three eighths into seven and 11 eighths. These, this represents the same value. I didn't change anything, I just regrouped to my fractions. If you ate seven brownies and 11 eighths of another brownie, and I ate eight brownies and three eighths of another brownie, we've eaten the same amount, right? Because I had to make an improper fraction right here. Now, all I need to do is rewrite my bottom fraction or mixed number. I'm going to circle my numerators. 11 minus six is now five. My denominator stays the same. Seven minus three is four. And the difference of eight and three eighths and three and six eighths is four and five eighths. Okay, the only difference today is, and this is why we've lined it up vertically the entire time, because if you do this vertically, it makes so much more sense and it's easier to see what happens when you're regrouping from your whole number to your fraction. All right, that's the I do problem. Let's do a we do problem together. Okay, here we have two and two six minus one and four six. Again, my denominators are the same, so I can subtract these. So I'm gonna go ahead and line it up vertically. And the biggest mistake people make when they're doing this is they think to themselves, wow, wait, I can't do two minus four. So they go ahead and switch the numbers. That way they don't have to borrow. But here's the problem. Four minus two is two now, right? But you can't do one minus two. Again, you've, we've known this since we've subtracted whole numbers, the bigger number always has to go on top. The other thing a lot of people like to do is they like to decompose their numbers, okay? And that's great, but then when they do that, what they do is so they don't have to borrow, they accidentally switch the fractions. That's why I don't teach it that way either. So let's go back to lining it up vertically. Let's circle our numerators and let's think to ourselves: two minus four, more on the top or more on the floor? More on the floor, go next door and get one more. So I'm gonna take, my two's gonna become a one and I'm gonna take the one that I've I'm going to regroup and it's going to turn into a fraction, right? My big one. For this one, my denominator is six. So then I want to use the big one, six, six. Now, again, I put the plus sign there because I'm getting one more. I'm not getting six, six. I'm adding six, six to what I already had. Now my new whole number is one. My fraction is going to be eight, six because two plus six is eight. My denominator would stay the same. And now I can in fact subtract. So I'm going to circle my numerators again. Now, more on the top, no need to stop. Eight minus four is four. My denominator stays the same. One minus one is zero. So I, I could put a zero or leave it the same. So my answer is four six. Then I can also simplify that to two thirds. Okay, again, simplifying not the point of our video, but it's always a good idea if you know how to, that you practice that skill. Let's do one more we do problem. And I wanted to do this one with you because again, just like we when we were adding mixed numbers, what happens if we're doing a mixed number minus a fraction? And actually, nothing really changes, okay? Because I'm gonna line up my fraction, and then if I don't have a whole number, I can just put a zero right there, right? So I have 14 and 5 eighths minus zero and seven eighths. I'm gonna circle my numerators. Five minus seven, I can't do that. More on the floor, go next door and get one more. I'm gonna cross out my entire whole number, and 14 minus one would be 13. And then I'm giving that one I just took from there to my fraction, right? And I'm getting one more, so I put my plus sign. My denominator is eight, so my big one would be eight eighths. Now I'm going to rewrite it just so I don't get confused because the hardest part about math is being neat. Now I had five uh, plus eight, which is 13. My denominator stays the same. And now I can subtract 13 minus seven. 13 minus seven would be six. 13 minus zero would be 13, so my answer for j, j equals 13 and 6 eighths, or you could simplify that to 13 and 3 fourths. Again, I'm just asking myself after I line it up vertically, more on the top or more on the floor. It's the same thing over and over and over again.
All right, here's a U try problem. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead, pause the video, try to solve this one by yourself. When you're ready to check your work and see how you did, push play and we can check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it and now you are checking your work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to line this up vertically. So I have 11 and five eighths, making sure my bigger number is on top, minus five and seven eighths. I'm going to circle my numerator, five minus seven, more on the floor, go next door, get one more. So my 11 is going to become a 10 and I'm going to give that one to my fraction. My big one is gonna be eight over eight. Apparently I liked the denominator eight for this video. And so now when I rewrite this, my equivalent mixed number, okay, it's just I have an improper fraction with the whole number now, is 10 and 13 eighths. Okay, and again, 10 and 13 eighths is equivalent to 11 and 5 eighths. It's just you have an improper fraction here to help us subtract now. Okay, so I didn't really change anything other than just regrouping from my whole number to my fraction. Now I'm going to subtract 5 and 7 eighths. Think to myself, more on the top now, no need to stop. 13 minus 7 is 6. My denominator stays the same. 10 minus 5 is 5. And so the difference, or t, which is my variable for this question, equals 5 and 6 eighths. Or you could simplify that to 5 and 3 fourths. Hopefully that's a quick rundown of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it even works. Drawing that big one and borrowing with that really shows that you understand what's happening when you are subtracting these mixed numbers. We really appreciate you checking us out today. Check out our subtracting mixed number song. It is awesome. A little R&B song for us out there. We really appreciate you checking us out today. Please like, comment. We would love for you to subscribe and join our Instructive Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instructive Beats, out.